This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. This week we're going to start out with learning about calculating DC total resistance of series circuits. Now this is a very basic DC fundamentals course, uh, you know, a little courselet inside of our program. This is not a DC fundamentals course. You could teach an entire 10 week course on DC fundamentals. I really encourage you, you know, get familiar with that in your career. I'm just going to teach you some basic things on some questions that you may face on your examination. So if you look at this circuit here, they're both the same picture. If you look at it, you have the, a battery symbol there. And we're going to go with conventional flow, saying it flows from the positive through the resistors to the negative. Electron flow would be from the negative to the positive. But our example here shows it from the positive, going through the resistors, coming back you know, through the negative. So we're going to learn how to calculate total resistance of DC circuits. We're also going to learn how to calculate voltage drop across the DC circuit. The total resistance of a series circuit is equal to the sum of the individual resistances. So RT, which just means resistance total, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on and so forth, however many resistors you have. Okay, so we take a look at this. We have a 12 volt battery in this case. We have three ohms on R1, three ohms on R2. So this is gonna give us an RT of six ohms. Okay, so RT is equal to the total of all the resistors. In this case, R1 is 9 ohms. R2 is 4 ohms. So RT is going to be 13 ohms. Now let's learn about voltage drop of series circuits. First, we must calculate what the amp draw is on the circuit. If we know the voltage in the resistance, how could we calculate the amperage? We learned in week 2, part 1, about Ohm's law. First, we must get the total resistance and then apply Ohm's law. So in this case, it is 9 plus 4. It's going to be 13 ohms. So what we do is we set up our formula so we remember, and we plug in the knowns. In this case, we know that it's a 12-volt circuit. We've got 13 ohms of resistance. All we must do now is to divide 13 up into 12, and that's going to give us our amperage. In this case, it's 0.923 amps. Second, we must use Ohm's law again to find the voltage drop across any given resistor. Okay, so voltage drop is going to be equal to R1 multiplied by I and voltage drop of a resistor 2 is going to be equal to that resistor multiplied by I. Because remember, we're just trying to find the voltage drop. So E equals IR. Just plug in the knowns. In this case, we know the I and we know the resistance and we're looking for the voltage drop. So we just multiply those two together. On this other side here, we just plug in the knowns and we know the amperage and the resistance and we just multiply that and that's going to give us the voltage drop. So the voltage drop of R1 is 8.3 when we did our multiplication and the voltage drop of R2 is 3.7. So all we have to do is multiply those. Now I want to know, uh, point something out to you that if you add those two voltage drops together, it is going to equal the total voltage of the circuit. Okay, a quick recap. The voltage drop of R1 is 8.3. The voltage drop of R2 is 3.7. 8.3 plus 3.7 is going to equal 12 volts. The voltage will be equal to the sum of the voltage drop across all resistors, and that's how you double check your work. Now we're going to learn about calculating DC total resistance of parallel circuits. Last week, we learned about calculating the total resistance of series circuits. We're also going to learn about calculating voltage drop across an individual resistor in a parallel circuit. How many of you have already studied parallel RT questions in the past? The total resistance of a parallel circuit is expressed in this formula. So R total is equal to the reciprocal of the reciprocal of R1 plus the reciprocal of R2 plus the reciprocal of R3 and so on and so forth. To get the reciprocal of a number, you will just divide that number up into one. 
So what we're going to do is first get the reciprocal of each resistor, then take the reciprocal of that number, and that is going to give us the resistance total. This is another way to look at the formula. The reciprocal of our total equals the reciprocal of each one of those numbers. So that's another way to look at it. Okay, so let's do an example question. We have a 12 volt circuit, a 3 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor. So let's take a look at how to do this. It's not as hard as it looks once you learn how to do it. So let's start with this easy one. The easiest way to do this is go ahead and grab your calculator. And this is the only time doing load calculations that I will tell you not to push enter in between each calculation and save it and, you know, just let it build. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what you need to do is take 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3. Now, the reason we use 3 each time is because that was the resistance in ohms of each resistor. So we just did 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3 and then push equals and that is going to give us 1. Now to take the reciprocal of that number, we just take 1 and divide it by that number, which happens to be 1 in this case, and that is going to give us 1. So we ended up with 1, but we cannot stop there. Now we must take and divide that number by 1. In this case, it's 1 divided by 1 and the total uh, resistance is going to be 1 ohm. Now let's do another. Okay, so we have 6, 3, and 9 as our resistors. Okay, so what is the total resistance of this parallel circuit? I want to note out right away that we have four options here in our question. The answer is always going to be smaller than the smallest resistor in the circuit. So if you're in your testing center and you get a question like this, remember, we're just covering basic questions that you might meet. This is not an all-inclusive uh, DC fundamentals. This is just teaching you some basics, okay? Um, that would be a whole nother 10-week course. But if you look at this, we can tell right away that A and B are not going to be correct because the total resistance of a parallel circuit is going to end up being smaller than the smallest resistor. So that's an easy way to figure that out. So now if you had to guess and you forgot the steps, you had a 50-50 shot, just select C or D. If you couldn't remember, and you got a 50-50 shot of getting the question right when you're in the test. Remember, always mark an answer on your test as correct. Even if you're just taking a total guess, you can mark it to come back later, but always put an answer because if you run out of time, you got a one in four shot of getting it right. Okay, so we take our one divided by six plus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 9. Go ahead and do that on your calculator now. Pause the video if you need to. If you took the time and worked that out, it is going to give you 0 0.611111. Okay, so I have found when you're doing this, and I'll, I'll give you this tip in a minute, just hang loose. But we cannot stop there. We must then take the reciprocal of that number. So we, we must then divide 1 by that number. So we take 1 and divide it by 0 0.611111. And this is where uh, this tip comes in. So you take 1 and divide it by the number that you came up with. So in this case, it's 0 0.6111. And the question is, is how many of those 1s do you put? What you do is go ahead and put the 1 divided by whatever the number is and then type it in as many times until you get an answer that's close to one of your um, choices in your question. So in this case, we keep typing it in until we get 1.63, 6, which is going to allow us to round up, and that's going to give us 1.64. I'll point this out that the testing center is not going to put them that close, that if you did not round up or down, you're going to get the answer wrong. If you notice in our question, D is one whole number uh, larger than that. So you're going to be okay there. So just type it in until you feel comfortable with one of the answers that's represented. And then we round it up and we selected C. Okay, let's do another one. What is the total resistance of this parallel circuit? So we look right away and we see that our smallest resistor is 2. So we know right away that C and D are incorrect. So it's going to be either A or B. So let's move forward. So we take 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 8 
plus 1 divided by 10. And then we will select enter. That is going to give us 0.75, but we cannot stop there. We must then divide 1 by that number. That is going to give us 1 divided by 0.75. And that is going to give us 1.3793. We're just going to round up to 1.38. Just so you do these in practice, if you have chose to go with our testing center, we're going to have these questions on there. We also have detailed answers on how to work through the questions. If you've not joined the testing center yet, it's very uh, it's a very important tool in getting your license when you are ready to truly start practice testing. Um, we have weekly tests for each video. We also have unlimited practice testing and simulated exams. So whenever you're ready for that resource, just head over to electricalcodecoach.com. If, if, if you're not, just go ahead and keep please using these free resources. We want to make as much possible available to you guys for free. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach. So this time we're going to take a look at transformer current calculations. Now we're just going to kind of, you know, learn the basics of it. And then as we're, you know, once you guys get the core, we'll be able to expand with more videos and just different practice questions. Also, some of these questions will be reflected in the, you know, the testing center. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and do a practice question. What is the secondary current of a transformer that has a 4 to 1 turn ratio and a primary current of 3 amps? To calculate the current of either primary or the secondary, you can use the turn ratio to help you. The turn ratio is the opposite ratio of the current ratio. Just take the 4 to 1 turn ratio, flip it, and now you have a 1 to 4 current ratio. For every 1 amp on the primary, there's going to be 4 amps on the secondary. So if the primary current is 3 amps, then you would just multiply it by 4. 3 multiplied by 4 equals 12. And we're going to select D. In future videos, I'm going to teach you how you can double check your work if you know the voltage. Let's move on. What is the secondary current of a transformer that has a 2 to 1 turn ratio and a primary current of 3 amps? To calculate the current of either the primary or the secondary, you can use the turn ratio to help you. The turn ratio is the opposite ratio of the current ratio. Just take the 2 to 1 turn ratio and flip it. For every 1 amp on the primary side, there are 2 amps on the secondary side. So if the primary current is 3 amps, then you would just multiply it by 2. 3 multiplied by 2 equals 6. So we select C. Hey guys, before you go, we just launched an Electrical Code Coach Facebook page. So if you want to, you can head over to facebook.com and check it out. It's Electrical Code Coach. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to go over there, maybe give us, a, give us a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment if this program has helped you, has inspired you, has encouraged you, or anything like that. So if you want to do that, that would help a lot. Thanks. Hey everyone, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to be learning about transformer turn ratios. So we're not going to get into the super complexity of all the different algebra, but we're just going to teach you a real practical way on how to calculate in between turn ratios and the voltage. Uh, and this is really, you know, it's great knowledge just to know, you know, just to have a good understanding of it. And it's also could really help you on your test. Uh, there's a chance in your journeyman and masters at any level, you're going to be facing a transformer turn ratio question and this uh, if you master this principle you should be able to answer any of them that you're faced with so let's go ahead and get started what is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a 4 to 1 turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480 this turn ratio is stating that for every four volts on the primary side there is one volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio for every four windings of wire on the primary side, there's one winding of wire on the secondary side. To find the secondary output, in this case, you would divide the primary voltage by four and figure out what one unit would be. So you take 480, you divide it by four, 
and that is going to give you 120. You can double check your work by taking the one unit that you found, multiplying it again by four, and making sure that you get back to the primary voltage. This is going to be a 480, 120 step down transformer. And we're going to select A. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a two to one turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480? This turn ratio is stating that for every two volts on the primary side, there's one volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every two windings of wire on the primary, there is one winding of wire on the secondary. To find out what the secondary output would be in this case, you would divide the primary voltage by two and figure out what one unit would be. So we take 480, we divide it by two, and that is gonna give us 240. Now we can double check our work by multiplying back that one unit that we found. So we take 240 multiplied by two, and that's gonna bring us back to our primary voltage, which is 480. This is a 480 240 step down transformer. And we're gonna select D. All right, what is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a one to four ratio and a primary voltage of 120? This turns ratio stating that for every one volts on the primary side, there's gonna be four volts on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every one winding of wire on the primary, there are four windings of wire on the secondary. In this case, we already know what one unit is on the primary side, it's 120. To find out what four of them would be, we will just multiply. So we take 120 multiplied by four, and that's gonna give us 480. And we now find out that this is a 120 480 step up transformer. And we're gonna select C. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a one to two ratio and a primary voltage of 120? This turn ratio is stating that for every one volts on the primary side, there are two volts on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every one winding of wire on the primary, there are two wire windings of wire on the secondary. In this case, we already know what one unit is on the primary, it's 240. To find out what two of them would be, we'll just multiply. So we take 240 multiplied by two equals 480. This is a 240-480 step-up transformer. And we're gonna select B. All right, guys, let's do one more to show you that you can use this relationship back and forth, whether you know the primary or the secondary. What is the primary voltage of a transformer that has a four to one turn ratio and a secondary voltage of 120? This turn ratio stating that for every four volts on the primary side, there is one volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every four windings of wire on the primary side, there's one winding of wire on the secondary. To find out what the primary output would be in this case, you would just multiply the secondary voltage by four to figure out what the total would be. So we take 120 multiplied by four, that's gonna equal 480. This is a 480, 120 step down transformer. And we're gonna select C. So I hope you guys learned a little bit in this lesson on how to calculate this. You can use this relationship back and forth, just stop and think, what do I know? And what can I do back or forth to figure out what the other one is? So if I know the higher one or I know the lower one, I can use either multiplication or division to figure out what the other one is. So I hope you guys have a great day. Please like and subscribe. Guys, what's up? See Electrical Code Coach. So today we're going to be looking at overcurrent protection for transformers. We're going to try a new method of showing you guys some things. So just bear with me a little bit and we'll see if it works. So let's look at the question. What size primary only overcurrent protection device would you select for a 480 volt transformer that has a current of 11 amps? So we're going to start straight from scratch here. So we're going to close our code book. We're going to slide this up here. We're going to close our code book. And what we're going to do is is I want to show you guys um, how to use the keyword and index process to find this question. So we're going to look. We're looking for transformers as our overall uh, you know, theme of the question. So let's go here. Let's flip back. 
L M N O P Q R S T. So we get back here to transformers. When you guys see these questions and you're like, oh man, you know, like, what well, you know, what do I do? You just go through the process. You do the same process every time. So we get here in T for transformers. Now our question states. Okay, for overcurrent protective devices. So now we're looking for in transformers. Now we're dealing with overcurrent protection. Come down through here, alphabetical order, overcurrent protection. Now we're going to go to the first article, okay, but we're going to leave our hand in the back just in case it's not what we need. So let's head over to 450.3. We're going to flip over here. If we close our book, I think we have a transformers tab. That'll get us in 450, or you can get yourself close. Okay, so we end up in 450.3. So we end up in overcurrent protection. Just really quick read. It says overcurrent protection of transformers shall comply with part A, B, and C of 450.3. So we flip over here. What's part one say? I'm going to pick up the camera and kind of zoom in here. It says uh, transformers for over 1,000 volts. If we look at our question, it's a 480 volt transformer, so that doesn't work. Okay, part B is for transformers 1,000 volts or less. Okay, so what we do is we look around here, and we're looking at these tables. And this table is uh, 450.3A, and if we look up here, that's for 1,000 volts nominal or higher. And if we look over here, we are dealing with 450.3B. And now I'm going to step into the other mode with the camera. Okay, so now that we're in the correct table, we just want to read the heading and make sure that we're in the right section. It said that part B was what we wanted to deal with. Um, we're dealing with transformers 1,000 volts or less. Okay, now we just read our question. So our question stated that we had... So our question stated that we had uh, 480 volts and it said that there was a current of 11 amps and we were dealing with primary protection only. So we're dealing with primary protection only. We are gonna fall in the currents of nine amperes or, amperes or more. So it says there's 125% demand factor and we need to see note one. So we quickly slip down here to note one. It says we're 125% of this current does not correspond with the standard rating. Then we're allowed to use the next size up. So it's the next size up rule for this. So we're gonna go ahead and do our math. We know that we have 11 amps, 11, multiplied by 1.25. That is going to give us 13.75 amps. We know that there is no 13.75 amp breaker. So now we're going to flip over to 240.6a. And if you've been practicing in the free videos, we go through this stuff extensively. So we're just basically following the same process. And we're in 240.6A, ours was 13.75 amps. We go and we select a 15 amp overcurrent device. So this is basically just a reiteration of what we've been doing, just doing a different way. So anytime you get in the test and you get thrown an oddball question like that, just go through the same steps. Remember the keyword and index process. Remember um, how to read, your, you know, just slow down, read your tables, read the table headings. You know how to apply demand factors. And if you don't, you can go back and take our free 10-week course. We cover all this stuff. It's absolutely for free right here on YouTube. And then you're going to head over to 240.6a, select the next size up, and you're going to select a 15. So I hope this video helped you guys. I hope this method of delivery works, and you guys have a great night.